Welcome to Ashes and Roses, the podcast, a millennial review of entrepreneurship. We're We're your hosts. hosts. I'm Junie. And I'm Ashley. We'll be sharing with you an honest review of our trials and triumphs in business. The ashes and the roses. On season two, we'll be inviting other entrepreneurs to share their journey as well. Join us every Wednesday on Apple, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. And as always, we'll be keeping it real, raw, and and revolutionary. revolutionary. Yeah, welcome Thank back. You. Welcome back to another episode of Ashes and Roses. It's your girl, Junie. And I'm Ashley. And we're back, and it's still season two, and we're still challenging industries. Um, and today is a big industry. It's a juicy like, topic. If we can't get any more controversial. Ooh, and revolutionary <laughs> and real and raw. I'm really excited about today's so conversation. Am I, actually. I'm really yeah, excited. I'm really excited. And to introduce our guest host um, for today's topic of unjust justice where we yes. are challenging the current criminal justice um system or industry mm-hmm. um and its practices and i'm gonna let my lovely host co-host here introduce our guest yes yes so our guest host today is a longtime friend of junie yes our very own host here yes um he is 31 years old and he was born in haiti actually and you moved to the u.s in uh when he was 16 years old um, he became a black conservative. So this is why I'm super excited to have this Ooh. conversation because <laughs> what? Okay. Especially in this climate, let's talk about it. Yeah. So, um, he is now a law enforcement officer, which thank you so much for your service. Um, I, he has yeah. ambitions to become an entrepreneur in the future. Um, yes. So you will talk a little bit more about like what your, more of your ambitions, what you plan to do, what kind of businesses you plan to open, and of course, what kind of entrepreneur you think you are. Mm-hmm. So, you know how we start off our show, right? Because you watch, right? I don't think we told them his name. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. No Name joining us no, today. No, just kidding. Sorry. So, today, our guest host, none other, Don Cesar. Welcome. Hello. Welcome. hello. Thank you so much for taking the time Hi. out. Yes, to join us. And he's joining us via Zoom. Yes. So it's our first Mm -hmm. Zoom episode. Okay, guys, moving on up in the editing world. Okay, listen. Okay. Levels to this podcast thing. (laughs) Okay. Okay, so welcome to our show, Don Cesar. Thank you for coming on and taking the time to come on and talk with us. Yes. Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. And I'm very honored to be here. And we're happy to have you. Yes. (laughs) Yes. So, um, you watch the show, right? As I was saying before, you watch the show, right? I've I've, I've brought uh, I've listened to a few episodes. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, not actually. <laughs> Sorry, no, I'm laughing because the way you hesitated. Yeah, it's like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not on a daily basis, but whenever I'm in the car, you know, and I'm on my way to my. Uh, Military trainings. And okay, I, that's nice. I take this opportunity. I took this opportunity to listen to y'all. Awesome, and great. Most likely today, I was just listening to uh, some of y'all um, episodes today. Okay, so you know very mm-hmm. well that we start our episodes with the thought of the day, and yep, yep and <laughs> usually we'll go. With, we'll start with Junie. Junie, yes. What is your thought of the day? So, um, my thought of the day today would have to be, uh, so it's October, so it's my birthday month. A um, Libra season. And my thought of the day is just, you know, I'm really just kind of looking at this past year mm-hmm. of my life and really just seeing the parallels or at least how different I'm going into this birthday versus last year. So, you know, as I approach this personal holiday of mine, I'm just in this um, state of really just accepting that life is going to move as it should. Mm -hmm. And whatever that God has for me is for me. And like really just leaning on my intuition 
and learning that like my life literally could be whatever I want it to for be. For it to be, yeah. You know? That's so. a beautiful place to be in life. Yeah, that's where I'm at right now. So that's my thought of the day. Okay. What about you? What's yours? Me? Um, You know, my thought of the day, crazy. It's kind of just been a little bit on the heavier end. Like just with the, just the climate. You 2020. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm just realizing like how hard it is to be. We're, we're, bu- we're busy. We're keeping ourselves booked and busy, which is good, you know, yeah. um, which is a blessing in itself. Um, but, um, at the same time with everything going on and like just the climate in the world, how it is a little bit harder to stride through this, mm-hmm. but I feel what you're saying in, in the sense of like, this is happening for our purpose. This is growing us. Mm-hmm. This is changing us. Um, you know, I'm thinking about, I guess I'm, I guess I think I'm grieving. <laughs> I'm <laughs> grieving like a world that it, that we used to live in. Yeah. You know what I mean? What used to be. Like, I think, you know, I know I said something the other day, like as I'm watching things on TV or, you know, um, watching people interact with each other. Um, I think I saw a birthday party on, on TV and somebody blew out the candle and I was like, oh, there goes the end of that. Nobody's blowing out candles anymore from this day forward I don't think you know so virtual candles exactly so it's like just little things that we're losing in the process of 2020 I think I'm taking the time to be like oh like I'm gonna miss that you know what I mean like not necessarily grieving in a way where it's like I'm moping around I'm still getting things done I'm still being productive but just in a sense like I'm acknowledging like yeah this is there's a change yeah there's a change and there's loss happening here so yeah yeah, that's my thought of the day. That's a little heavier. Mm-hmm, definitely yeah. a, little, a little heavier. What about you, Don? Do you have a, a thought of the day to share with us? Uh, sure, I do. Um, today, uh, it's 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 just uh, it, it, it's about this officer, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, that that has been on my mind lately. Um. <clears throat> He's a young officer, okay? It's, he's about 23 years old. Mm-hmm. And his name is Jacob Hancher, okay, from a, a police department in South Carolina. Uh, so, <clears throat> I, so this was in my mind as I was coming home. And, and I was just thinking, uh, this young officer probably just got out of the academy, okay? Because he's been with the uh, department for about uh, a year Mm -hmm. Uh, but this officer uh, was shot okay he was shot and he did not make it and uh, so I was thinking this officer responding to uh, he was responding to a domestic disturbance and and he was just trying to get there to help somebody else you know and and uh, he didn't know that that day waking up and probably feel proud to put the uniform on and and uh, go 1041, which means that you know I'm gonna be on duty 1041. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's not really thinking about oh wow I'm not gonna be 1042 at the end of the day, which means that I'm off duty now. Um, so this officer went to this place to help somebody out and ended up being shot and killed. And in my mind, I'm thinking every day I put this uniform on, I put my body armor on and I'm leaving this house, going to the door and I'm thinking this could be it, you know? And, and for people not, for people to not understand, you know, how dangerous our, uh, our job is mm-hmm. and and how fragile we can be, you know, just be out on the street and and uh, not thinking, oh, well, this is just a sample call, okay? Uh, it's just somebody needs help with opening the door because their grandmother is inside the house and not answering the phone and, and, 
uh, she can't open the door. It can't just be this call. And, and at the end of the day, it could turn out to be something very horrific. Mm-hmm. You know, because you never know. Everything, everything changes all the time, all the time. Uh, so you always have to be on your toes. And for people to say that in our job, in our profession, that we should have done this, we should have done that, it's not simple. Mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 very not simple. So, and and I get to think about that every day when when I'm meeting somebody, somebody waved me down and wants to talk to me. Uh, first thing I have to think about is my safety. Okay, yeah. so okay, I'm approaching this person, but I'm also looking around that person, looking around me to make sure that I'm not being in bush. You know, it, it's just, it's a lot to be thinking yeah. about. Yeah. So, oh. so that was my thought of the day today. Man, wow. were you so competing on like who could be heavier? Jesus. <laughs> I did oh. not. Okay. So. I was literally looking around for my tissue. Like I knew I had that for a reason. Right. Like, right. wow, that is so, wow. That's so deep. And, and I feel very sad for this young officer. Yeah. Uh, because he's very young. Not much years of experience, just about a year mm-hmm. of experience, and and then and he just lost his life. Yeah, lost his life, and you know, his it, life was taken. I want to make a comment because um, you mentioned, like, you know, someone coming up to you when you're in your uniform, especially right now, it's such a dangerous mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. because literally yes. here in our city, um, this security guard got mistaken for a police officer. And was shot mm-hmm. at nine times. What? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know, so I'm over here like telling the, you know, as I'm leaving um, my, the area that I was in, I was letting mom was like, hey, don't get mistaken for a police officer on the way out. Okay. Just make sure. Cause that's, yeah. that's yeah. scary. That is really scary. And you guys are here, like you said, like, and I wonder what this is doing. I wonder if this whole process, is it weeding out? The like, you know, because we know there are good cops, there are bad cops, right? Is this whole process weeding out the good cops, bad cops? Because to me, I'm like, yo, if these cops are still in it, they're really in it because of their heart. Because if it was my profession, I would be on my way out. Like Mm -hmm. the first time I hear, oh, okay, people are rebelling and people are shooting at police and, Mm -hmm. you know, and and we're still work is going to be a lot more. Like we're protesting mm-hmm. every day and I'm gonna have to be at work. I'm going home. <laughs> so it, it I know really you guys is. have to have a heart and a passion to be doing yeah. this right now. Oh yeah, definitely. Because without passion, I don't think you would be able to do this job because uh, it really is a calling mm-hmm. and um, it takes a special person to be able to do this job. Mm-hmm. You have to be able to say, or this person ran out to this alley. It's a dark alley. You got to be able to man up and go through that alley and chase that person. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just the way it is. If uh, my partners, uh, we go to this house and uh, we hear somebody in distress inside the home. And as we trying to, get inside the house to rescue that person and and uh, somebody else decided to shoot at us. Mm-hmm. I have to be able to go in there and take care of business, you know, uh, help that person. Uh, and this is the nature of a job every single day. Uh, it's just not about those type of situation. Uh, a lot of times we spend uh, a, a time helping people. We, we don't just go to calls or to calls. And uh, we also respond to uh, a lot of our other calls, like medical calls, for mm-hmm. example, or a mother trying to persuade her daughter to not run away. Uh, we answer to all, all these calls. Yeah. So uh, we carry many hats yeah. as a police officer. Our experience with, so go ahead. You. Yeah, no, I just wanted to speak to like 
something you said earlier in your thought of the day about just <clears throat> it has to be a passion um, for people mm-hmm. to do this. Because I just being like a family member or like a friend of um, someone in this line of work, right? Your instinct is to be like, no, why? Right, <laughs> you know like, why I mean? are you risking your why life you every day? Why are you signing up for this? You know what for I mean? For the dollar? Yeah. Like, right. no, but it's no, it's not for the money. It's not for the it's money. It's not for and the money. Exactly. And especially, too, mm-hmm. like, just knowing you for as long as I have, I do remember when you started kind of this journey of, like, you know, going into the military and um, this journey of landing you where you are now, I think um, I was one of the people that was like, yeah, no, you crazy. Like, <laughs> I was like, you gonna come and fight for this country that ain't even yours. You know, I know right, that I was, which I want to get into. Yeah, I was one of the people saying that, but I think as um, you know, we've grown and just watching you develop. I do believe that it has to be a calling for you because I just don't see why else. You know what I mean? Just knowing the risk that that there is to it, mm-hmm. I. I could definitely, definitely see that. So Right. So it sounds like this thought of the day is actually going into our topic, our guest host segment. Mm-hmm. So um, usually for our guest host segment, we will um, I will hit any random button and see what vibes sure. we're on today. <laughs> hopefully, okay. hopefully it, it <laughs> behaves. I will say I still do not have this memorized. OK, yeah. so what I hit is not. Up to me. Yeah, don't take it personal. Don't take it personal. I'll I'll roll with it. (laughs) Throw throw a color out there though, so it's just so I could say you chose it. Do you have any purple in there? I do. Okay. All right. So our guest host segment. Wow. (laughs) Crickets. These crickets. I'm sorry. You're not the first one hit with those crickets. But hey, the last cricket episode was a fan was favorite. Fire. So yeah. So you this might be another one. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So coming into your guest segment, because we've already kind of like started touching on a couple of things. Um, mm-hmm. you know, Junie mentioned this has to be a passion of yours. You know, being a Haitian I was wondering too, like being a Haitian native, like what made you become a conservative American and a proud American at that, a whole patriot. Yes. <laughs> Go America. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, so I was just curious, like, how did that journey begin? And then throughout this segment, Ju- Junie, we'll let you know what else you'll, that we want you to cover. Yes. What else do okay. you want him to cover? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. I was just, I thought for some reason, I don't know where I was. Um, so, also, in addition to what Ashley was saying, um, you'll also tell people where our audience where they can find you on social media. Let us know any projects that you have um, or that you're working on or that you're interested in getting started. Um, and then we would we'll go from there. Yep. Just a segment all about you. Yep. Yep. So start off with how did you become a proud American? A conservative. What did he say? A, con- <laughs> a, a black conservative. Yes. Because I'm very intrigued. <laughs> I've been wondering this myself. Well, uh, for me, it's, uh, I was never in politics. Uh, I didn't know what politics was. Uh, and I think it started when I uh, moved to Oklahoma, mm. you know, mm. and and uh, and I got a little older and, and then now I started getting into uh, politics and try to uh, look at the, you know, both parties and see what their, you know, what are, what is their agenda? You know, what, what, what are they fighting for? You know, and, and that's what I was interested in. Mm -hmm. And I know in between they might have some, you know, it's politics, like, you know, politics, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. Um, it's because like sometimes they're fighting to get more Republican or more Democrats so that they can pass, you know, their bills or their ideas. Um, and I find that, you know, being a Republican, their ideas is goes with what I believe in, you know, as a Christian. Mm, which, which, okay. So this is why, um, I became a conservative Republican. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and I believe that people should be uh, uh, should 
five should seek uh, uh, personal development and and not just sit around and hoping somebody just puts something in your hands and then and not try to uh, improve. And that's 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 how I find out that the Democrat. The Democratic Party is more about that, about, you know, sharing and um, taking away from people that are, you know, thriving or working hard so that they can help. And, and I'm not saying it's wrong to do, but I feel like it's uh, it's making people lazy, you know, mm -hmm. in a certain way. So that was the reason why. I chose to be a Republican. I rather would be a Republican than a Democrat. And uh, uh, so to help you Ooh, with the- can I can I make can yeah. I make can a we comment? make some comments in a segment? Can we take a let's, let's uh, okay go ahead discuss? <laughs> I must discuss. Yes. May I? Discuss, May I? discuss okay. please. Thank you. Thank you, Vinny. Thank you. Okay, so <laughs> I'm not gonna disagree with you as far as, you know, agendas, okay? And okay. how possibly, yes, the Democratic agenda is more to hand money to people, right? Would you agree? Yeah. Okay. Did you have you noticed that the Republican Party is more like handing money to corporations? So it's really like capitalism is really like socialism for businesses. Really. So it I'm really more is. Uh, so hear me out. Hear me out, though. What do you mean a traditional? A what do you traditional mean? Traditional. Republican? Well, it's no traditional capitalism, you know. Capitalism. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yes. Which You're consists of capitalism. describe describe traditional capitalism for you. How can I put it? Um, how can I put it? Uh, it's, it's basically you working hard, you know, once you get up there, then uh, you can multiply your like wealth to pull yourself and, up and, by and your get, bootstraps and, and they get more and more wealth and right yeah. but if you really look yes that's true okay as a mm -hmm. small business you start off as a small business whatever yep. mm -hmm. but what i'm talking about these big corporations these men who were born with money mm -hmm. right they continue to get funded by the government so i'll give you an example we talked about in our in our um segment um addressing the nursing home industry senior care industry Huge. Okay. Can you can you agree that nursing homes are doing a poor job all together when it comes to taking care of an individual person to the point where would you want to be in a nursing home? So being the foreigner immigrant, okay. you know, I would say you don't believe not it. really because mm -hmm. because uh, growing up in Haiti, let's say, mm -hmm. you know, in Haiti, uh, they value, you know, elders. Yes. You know, they take care of elders uh, and and uh, here in America, they don't really take care of the elders. Mm -hmm. um, it's more like a, they treat them as children, mm -hmm. you know, not even and as they're children. Yelling at them, they're they're hating them mm -hmm. and and it just breaks my heart. And, and I'm looking at my mother uh, the other day when I went to visit my, my mother and, and I'm thinking I really need to uh, figure out a way to get my mother closer to me so that um, uh, I can tell her, hey, you don't need to work mm -hmm. anymore. You need to uh, just relax and I mm -hmm. don't want you to, you know, struggle and all that stuff. So it mm -hmm. really, it really bothers me, you know, cause I know if I pull her, and the uh, uh, nursing, nursing home. home. You nursing say, home. Yeah, Haitian kids. We don't. Yeah. We don't say that. We don't say that word. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk. We don't talk yeah. about that. <laughs> Please. <laughs> then, you know, I don't think it would be. I think it's just me throwing money away, and because yeah, uh, to get poor I, care. I, I think I think I was listening to that pod, particular podcast because, like you, you said something about. You know, if they're Indians or Haitians, like, mm -hmm. and then they go to the nursing home, but they're not getting Haitian foods. They're not getting mm -hmm. Indian foods. Mm -hmm. So they're just getting whatever they get. Like, yeah. Whatever the default food Processed is. food. Yeah. And yes. You know, yes. You know one way so, to combat that? Hmm. 
is to send your loved one to Sapphire House. Yes, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> what is Sapphire House, you ask? <laughs> Sapphire House is a memory care home located in Westerville, Ohio, providing personal care and um, memory care to adults affected by Alzheimer's and dementia. Visit us at sapphirehousing.com to schedule a virtual tour. Yes, my favorite part about Sapphire House is the ratio, okay? Mm -hmm. We have, mm -hmm. right now, we have a, a like one to four, one to five ratio versus right now in some nursing homes, literally the ratio is one to 24, yeah. one to 24 people, maybe not nursing homes, but assisted livings. You know what I mean? So how, how, if you were on hold and you, and somebody said there are 24 people on hold, would you wait? Mm-hmm. No, okay, wouldn't. but these people are pressing the button for necessities. Like, I need to use the bathroom. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I fell. I hurt myself. I'm yeah. dizzy. I'm in pain. You know, like, mm -hmm. these are the reasons why people are hitting the button. And if you have 24 people to take care of, how? How is that? So this same industry is getting millions of dollars from Medicaid, a government funding, right? Millions of millions of dollars right now. And all that money is going to the top heads. It's not going to the care of the Your actual residents. Resident. Yeah. So what is that? Yeah. So what is capitalism? So what is Republic? What is the Republican Party promoting for real? You know, is it promoting putting money in businesses' pockets? Which, if that's the case, that's cool with me. But that's another form of socialism, just for businesses. Mm -hmm. Businesses are entities, right? Okay. So, uh, it, so, I would say that. Oh, I mean, am, am I wrong to compare, make the comparison? Of, no, you know. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Continue. Go ahead. What were you going to say? Okay. So I, I was going to say that uh, America was founded on um, Americans that didn't want to pay taxes, right? Mm. They, they wanted to become independent from the British mm. because they were paying too much taxes, right? Yes. So we don't like to pay taxes, you know, Period. in the first place. Right. Yeah. So, and we just want more money, more money, more money. And this is what Americans are, you know, and then we have the Democrat, uh, Democratic Party mm -hmm. that wants to change all of that, you know, change, you know, what the founding fathers, you know, did, mm -hmm. you know, they want to change the whole, the entire system. And and I found it a little difficult to do because it's just going to create a lot of conflict and uh, right. it's just going to, yeah. But, but so if, see if, if that happens, I don't know if America would be, you know, where it is right considered now. Considered America. It, right it might be like, yeah. Right. So, but you see how we can have this conversation based on, so you're basing because because from what you were saying about why you um, felt like you were more Republican, you know, like, a, apart from the Christian part, um, as an entrepreneur, there are Republican ideals, right, or Republican policies that I can identify with because as an entrepreneur, it some of the policies that they want to put in place or already have put in place do benefit me at the end of the day. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And I hear a lot, you know what? I hear a lot of black entrepreneurs saying that. Yeah. It benefits oh, yeah. their pocket. Right. You know, and even T I well, T I admitted Trump, it. But he, he always takes he admitted Trump right. Trump for, is a businessman because for <laughs> the we have we have to be um realistic and, and honest with ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. So I think too, you were making a point about um the fact that like, you know, this country was founded upon um, you know, Americans who didn't want to pay pay taxes. So the parties have become less about, you know, um, structure and policy and how they see the country should run. And I feel like more about, you know, like, um, politics, not just politics, <laughs> but you know, like when you're in high school and you're voting for like King or queen and it's really like the mm -hmm. most popular, the most liked. So whoever says they love black people the most, you know what I mean? That's who mm -hmm. we're going Pretty with. Pretty much the one with the most money who could like buy the nicest dresses. You and know what I mean? So I feel mm -hmm. like that's what yeah. 
politics has really become. And I don't feel like we're really having conversations about like, what is the Republican? What does the Republican Party stand for? And what does the Democratic Party stand for? And when we look at that objectively and apply it to our lives, which party, you get what I'm saying? Like, which set of ideals do we most identify with? Okay. Mm -hmm. You know? Yes. Yeah, so both both parties have obviously their flaws. Of, of course. You know. Yeah. Uh, but it's just that the Republican Party has more ups for me than the Demo uh, Democratic. Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. So even with the Democrats are doing the same thing the Republicans are doing. Yes. Y'all can mm -hmm. see it. You know, like the exactly. rich, the upper Democrats. Yeah. They're doing the same thing. They're benefiting. Themselves. what the republicans or what americans or america you exactly know, the, the tax code mm -hmm. is doing mm -hmm. right now like you see uh, nancy pelosi they're rich you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. um you looking at what the uh, you know the vice president nominee harris you know she has uh, some debts right but they're not talking about that she right. has millions in debts and you know not paying taxes Pers personal debt but they're not she, not she paying is, taxes, oh, like back like, taxes. Oh, like she's, to the IRS. She's, okay. She has debts and taxes. Oh, that mm -hmm. they're not. They're not, talk, mm -hmm. they're not talking about that. Mm -hmm. So when they were talking about Trump paying $750 in mm -hmm. those years, I was not surprised. I don't know if you read. Ooh, this conversation is going read. into some places. <laughs> that it, is, it is. No, go ahead. What? 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 I don't know. I don't know if you read "Rich Dad Poor Dad." I've read "Rich Dad Poor Dad," and it actually did change my entire perspective when it comes to uh, entrepreneurship. Like, mm -hmm. I wanted to do something to where I don't want to work anymore. You know, that's the book that changed I wanted my to life. Do whatever too. it takes yeah. to mm -hmm. get there i wanted to do that uh, then i learned about uh, uh, stocks and real estate and things like that and i've read other books as well and and i also read a few things about the tax code or what, whatnot um when the democrats uh the democratic party is talking about uh, uh increasing the tax the taxes or whatnot or cut taxes or whatnot uh have the rich pay more taxes it's never gonna happen i don't i don't know if you look at the past when they were talking about they're gonna have the rich pay more taxes i yeah. don't know if you can go it's it's been it's at funny least a because decade they've been talking about it's funny it. because, it never because happens. it's the <laughs> rich the rich are the ones who <laughs> control the laws richer. They exactly. literally, they control the laws. They control the politicians that are in yeah. place. So no, those yes. laws are never going to pass. They're never going to pass. Yes. Yes. And also they're the ones, the rich, the, those leaders are the, you know, they're the rich. They're not going to tax themselves that much. They're percent. the ones benefiting. Exactly. They're the you ones know? benefiting off the law. You know, it's, 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 it doesn't make any sense, but when you are rich, Here's the here's the thing that people don't know, understand. Not a lot of people know or understand. Because when you're rich, when you're on that other side of the pie or the you know the cake, mm -hmm. uh, you control how many taxis you pay. Yeah. We're, we're much. with you. Listen, I know this. Yeah, I'm just kind of in awe because we were literally having this conversation not too long ago. And and we were wondering, is it safe to have it online? On the podcast. We were wondering, <laughs> and, is this a conversation? And, I think, but I think our voices should be heard. Yeah. So I was going to say that, you know, let's say you are a real estate developer. Uh, you are a real estate um, investor. If you are investing into like the, what the government wants you to invest in, let's say assistant living, those section aid housing, things like that, you get what it's called tax breaks. Mm -hmm. You pay mm -hmm. no taxes. 
Mm -hmm. because you are investing your money into the the, the government so you know, pretty program. much the government is people don't know about so this. pretty much the government is telling you what the government is leaning and and pushing you towards is entrepreneurship at the mm -hmm. end of the day yes become yes. an entrepreneur because that's the way that's the way you get all of these things that these perks all of these perks that we want for socialism right like free yeah. this and free that free this whatever you can it, get it that as work. an entrepreneur by say you know by these l loopholes Socialism doesn't work for people that wants to be free financially. It doesn't work. I don't know what country. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you tell me a country that has that model? Model. Can you tell me that country that we see? Like, but you say Cuba. can't. People say, say Cuba is not. But you can't but, say that there's not a way to meet in the middle. This is what I don't agree with because there's a far left and there's a far right. But you right, know there's right. a way to meet in the middle. And both parties are being very unreasonable to where they and, refuse to meet in the middle because they're just and, so stuck on their party and, lines. Like, And this is what we need to work on. This mm -hmm. is what we need to work on and, and not be so divided. And, and I wanted to make another point about, let's say, Kaepernick, right? Mm -hmm. He's just talking bad about America. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. But he still lives in America. What's right? considered talking bad about America? Can you can you give me an example? So, <laughs> I mean, it's 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 saying America is bad, you know, and uh, you know, police brutality, things like that. Bringing right? up so I pretty mean, much, so it's like you know, you have that whole like Haitian household, uh, the truths, the commandments of like what's in stays, what happens in the house stays in the house type situation. You think that he should keep it to himself? Or we should no, keep that's it not within what I'm saying. Wrap. This is not the point I was going to make. I was going to make a, let, just hear me out. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's, but that's, but that's not the point I was going to make. Okay. Uh, but he's saying all these bad things about America, which that's his freedom to do. You know, you know, that's your first amendment, right? You know, your, yeah. First amendment, right. That you should be able to criticize the government. You know, that's your right. Mm -hmm. If you know your rights, uh, uh, so he's saying all these things and, and wanted to go back into the NFL. Uh, but I realized he didn't really want to go back into the NFL because whenever he had that uh, meeting, you know, where all the coaches were going to meet him to see him, you know, practice or throw the ball so they see his talent, you know. Mm -hmm. At the last minute, they changed the location and it wasn't even close. It was just about what an hour away or so, you know. And at that moment, I, I felt like he did not want to go back into the NFL. Why? Because he's making more money, talking bad about, about America. And this is why America is so great because you can make <laughs> money off of. I'm not. I'm not quoting Trump. Okay, I'm not quoting Trump. Yo, I but have a question. It truly is. It truly is. You know, amazing. You can make money on anything. I can make money going to. Why are you uh, making say, the hand gesture? I, is, why are you making? You've been watching too much news. You've been watching too much news. <laughs> He's making the whole. So, you can, I can make, make money. money. Let's say <laughs> you can. Let's say I have a lawyer. Okay, <laughs> I can go to a let's say a, a park, right? Uh, and and I probably have a child. I'm just. To another example, okay, and my child gets hurt, I can't sue the part. <laughs> you know, if I have a good lawyer, I make money there. You know, just because they don't want to deal with, they just settle with me. You see how you can make money in America just listen, like listen, that. Listen, wait, wait, wait. Before we go too far, I just want to seriously. I want. I've done it. <laughs> I want to ask you something. Okay. So I just want to be clear that you're coming on here and as a black cop in America in 2020 as a Republican, right? I'm just, I just want to know what your, what is your stance? What stance are you making? Because I want to understand, because I want to play devil's advocate a little bit. You know, I'm not saying that I disagree okay. with some of yeah. your ideals, but I do want to play mm -hmm. devil's advocate a little bit because everything that you're saying is, 
true in a sense, right? Everything that you're saying is mm-hmm. true and factual. Like you can find facts for this, but there is also a different reality in America that different people, different communities of, of people are living. And I think Republicans are not cognizant or they're not, um, in general, I feel like there's that, that bootstrap mentality works, right? If you have the opportunity to find yourself some bootstraps, you get what I'm saying? So I feel like we can't act like that's not a thing. Like it's, we always want to act like it's just, and everyone can make it like, yes, everyone can make it, but everybody doesn't have the same opportunities to even believe mm-hmm. that, that they, they can, can make, make it. it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Can you know? I, may I? Sure. May I interject? I'll speak. So here's my thing with that. I feel that expecting this same America mm-hmm. that enslaved us mm-hmm. to hand us the ticket to become free, free or equal or whatever to happen. them is like, why are we doing that? Exactly. We see mm-hmm. the game. I see the game that's being played here. It's a capitalism. It's a capitalist game. Ooh, revolutionary on this yeah. episode. It's here. a capitalist game. Whoever has the most money wins. Wins. Period. Yeah. So, like you said, you mentioned, yo, making money in America is so easy. It is. It is. If you have Wi-Fi, there literally it people, is. literally people are making videos in their empty apartments calling themselves minimalist <laughs> and they're making like $10,000 a month. Just sleeping on a brown yep. paper bag. Just showing yep. people like, this is how I minimalize everything I do. Yep. Millions mm-hmm. of dollars. I mean, they're making thousands of dollars a month mm-hmm. doing that. There are people who are just basically Sit- talking about their opinions. I mean, that's on YouTube. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. we will eventually be making money off this blessings. Thank you. I'm glad that that, that so, exists. So my thing is, is why are we waiting for them to save us? Why don't we just save ourselves? You know what I mean? No, not everyone is going to make it. Not everyone can yeah. pull themselves by the bootstraps. But those of us that do, when we make our money, those mm-hmm. of us that do, we pull those people up. Mm-hmm. We give them the boots. Like I said, I'm playing devil devil's advocates here because I share the same sentiments as you yes. all. You know what I mean? Like I said, like and I'm, I'm just responding. I think I've been saying that, you know, I feel like this expectation that America is going to turn around and love black people. Like why, why are we expecting that? That was never part of their constitution. Never, ever, ever. You know what I mean? So we need to, uh, and I, my quote of the day, Oh, I can't wait to say it, but Girl, we need it's to, too uh, soon. I know it's too soon, but it, it really <laughs> speaks to this, this point that I'm making right now, because I feel like it's still this vic. We're still, we're still the victims you know, we're still in this this place of, like, victimhood, you know, when now we do but have opportunities. Not- like Ashley said, like, we do have options. We do have ways. Like, people out here standing on the corner of the street making more money a day, <laughs> a day than people make a week or a month. You know what I mean? So it's all about mm-hmm. how creative are you, you know, There's how so hungry many opportunities. are you? There, there are- is definitely avenues to make money in this country. I see people doing... Um, um, DoorDash with their kids in the car. Mm-hmm. So you can't even say you don't have a babysitter. You can make money. Mm-hmm. Like there's no mm-hmm. limits to that. Mm-hmm. What were you going to say? Because I have a really good question for you. Sure. Oh, you ready for your question? You didn't have any uh, comments on what she said? Uh, no, go ahead and shoot. Okay. I wonder what it's like for you to be a blue life, like when you're in, in uniform and what it's like for you to be a black life when you're out of uniform. Well, like, what is that like for you? What is the, you know, how is it different? Like when you have the uniform on versus off. Okay. So whenever I have my uniform on, uh, heading out there, um, I don't get seen as a black man. I get seen as a police officer um, that, you know, do not care about human lives and here to come out and uh, uh, shoot uh, a black man. They don't see me as a black person, you know, wanting to come here and and 
help them understand uh, what we do as a police officer or um, uh, I, I felt very uh, frustrated, you know, at times mm -hmm. because in my mind, I'm thinking, so do you want just white officers? Don't you want black officers? Don't you want black officers to be in your neighborhood where you can feel a little bit more comfortable, you know, in a certain way? You know, if you don't trust the white officer, which it shouldn't be the case, you know, but it's like I get seen as a traitor, basically. And and I get the most. the most, what you could say, say to someone and, like the worst and I get it all. Wow. The worst thing you can say to somebody, I get it all. Mm. And it, it's, it's frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to stand there and take it. Mm -hmm. And I have to use my communication skills. I have to use, uh, you know, my facial express expression to kind of present like that. I, I cannot break. I have to take it and, and, and still do my job and still, and I have to, I have to explain to him, Hey, this is why we're here. We're not here to hurt you. We're not here to, uh, cause the issue, but Hey, understand this, you permitted this and we'll have to, you know, take care of this. You know, you're going to have to come with us. This is the reason why, mm -hmm. but as you know, not everybody listens. Not everybody uh, listens to what you said. You, you're going to have that person that's going to ask you why after everything you ask them to do. Uh, you can explain it to them, and then they're going to ask you why. Mm -hmm. And and this is the this is a word that I, I really do not like. You know, when somebody tells me why, mm -hmm. you know. And I and I explain to you why, and then you Keep tell me why, why again. Mm -hmm. you, it's basically trying to, you know, annoy you. my investigation and trying to annoy me, trying mm -hmm. to, you know. And when you do that, it just gives me, uh, I get the slide ball. Why are you doing this? Now, I'm asking myself, why are you doing this? Is there a reason? So now I'm looking for other, you know, clues that I can find. And this, this is why you see a lot, of, a lot of other unfortunate things happens because, you know, you're putting yourself into this situation. Not because of me, mm. because you created it. Not me, you created it. So are you saying and this, that what I'm hearing you say is that as, as an authority figure right? As a police mm -hmm. officer, if you tell me to do something and I question you, I question your authority, you are mm -hmm. then trying to question why I'm questioning your authority or, or like, like am I make, not able does that make somebody suspicious? So if I'm questioning your authority, okay. am I now suspicious? Yeah. So because as a human, as a human, as a person, I have a right to ask you anything pertaining to well, my I'd person. Right? Do you agree? I I I I agree. Okay. Because I think everybody wants to be treated with dignity and respect, mm -hmm. yes. which mm -hmm. I do. You know, mm -hmm. uh, if I pull you over, the first thing I say is I present myself and I tell you this is Deputy Cesar. You know, and mm -hmm. this is where I work, and you can see me in full uniform. You can see my badge and everything, and I tell you this is why I pull you over, and this is the reason why I pull you over now. Let me have your driver's license. Why are you going to ask me why? Well, by law, <laughs> then I have to explain to him mm -hmm. when you get pulled over, you know, you have to render your driver's license to the police officer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Procedure. <laughs> okay. It's procedure. Yeah. So why do I have to keep explaining it to you? Yeah. Right. Like we don't ask the cashier why I got to get But out. I will say this. I have had an experience where the 
police officer pulled me over and wouldn't tell me why I was pulled over, but wanted my information. So Can I, is, is that, so that's, is that how it's proper? Is that proper? Well, I don't know any, um, how the process here, uh, uh, the process is in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and I hope every agency goes to that. Uh, like here in Texas, we, uh, we, we have, we now have this uh, seven step approach. Mm -hmm. And I think it was because of the Sandra Bland mm -hmm. Act. Mm -hmm. It's basically to, it's basically helps uh, minimize the confrontation with the driver. Basically the first thing I say is, hello. And usually I'll say, hello, how are you doing? You know? Okay. And usually people always just look at me like, oh, wow, you know? Like, why are you asking me how, how I'm doing? You know, like, <laughs> just trying to, trying to calm him down. You yeah, know? that de-escalates yeah, the situation. I'm, I'm a human too. Yes, you know? exactly. Well, I'm, I'm deputy so and so, you know, the reason why I pull you over is <laughs> for this. Okay, you know? deputy. <laughs> and, <laughs> and may I have your, you know, I ask you, like, you know, respect with dignity. May I have your driver's license? Mm -hmm. Can I have your driver's license and proof of insurance? Mm -hmm. You know, these are the two things I would ask you. You know, mm -hmm. oh, I don't have my driver's license and uh, blah 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 blah. Okay, well, it's it's fine. Okay, I can also check by your name and date of birth. What is your first name? Mm -hmm. You give me your false name. A fictitious name. So now we have an issue there. Now you're suspicious. You know, so now <laughs> I have why to dig a little bit more. And then that's why, <laughs> right. and that's why you don't want to get out of the car. You, you're giving me a hard time. So now I have to figure out who you are because you could be anybody. You could mm -hmm. be somebody that they were looking for murder. You could be anybody yeah. that they were looking. You had a one on a, um, a sexual assault on a child. You know, all these bad, you know, Mm -hmm. um offenses you know yeah. you don't know who you have you could mm -hmm. be a terrorist you don't know that was trying to get away mm -hmm. and then you happen to be the officer to stop them yeah so mm -hmm. are you saying that you approach every or cops or officers in general approach every individual because i think a lot of times we get caught up on the fact of like oh this person was just x y z and not really bothering anyone or wasn't a bad person in their day-to-day -day life. But what I'm hearing you say is that you approach any, everyone as a potential criminal. Didn't you say, I think you said to us before in a conversation where you said like, it's your job to assess for criminal activity. Yeah. That's like your, one of your main positions. Is that so or a job primary, description? Or a primary job is to investigate if there was a criminal act. That was mm, committed. Uh, committed. Mm -hmm. You know, then that's our primary. So job. you're always you looking know, for make crimes. Sure. Now, so do you think well, that that's a good thing to always be looking for crimes? It's it's not that I'm always looking for crimes because of the nature of a cause. Sometimes it's not because it's not because we are looking for crimes. Uh, we're not there to look for crimes. It depends on the cause that we get. If I get a call, hey, uh, like I was explaining, um, I had a call where. The, the daughter call 911, hey, I haven't heard of, you know, my mother. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to call. She's not answering. Nobody's inside the home. Uh, and she's not answering the door. And, and I get there and I'm looking into the windows, you know, um, you, you know, trying to see if I can see any sign of life. And I happened to go inside the window, well, not inside, but I looked through the window and she'd been in that bathroom for days, mm -hmm. laying in on the floor. So I saw her and I tried to make contact with her and she answered to me. And I told the daughter, hey, she's inside. She 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 seemed fine. You know, she answered to me and uh, we got fire here. They opened the door and, and we got to her. So I'm not looking for... I'm um, really, but I, I'm, I'm kind of am because I need to figure out why this happened. Like what happened? You know? mm -hmm. I can still looking, you know? Mm -hmm. So this is why we always go to every call. Yeah. You know, that's why you guys show up to everything. So, you know, I will say, so I want to talk about like, I think that we relate in professions, um, 
in the fact that we're both like service, we're both people of service. So nurse, I'm a nurse, you're a cop. And we encounter a lot of the same people, believe it or not, because you're always sending people to the hospital. <laughs> you always send the fun ones. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so um, that is true. one thing that you mentioned was pretty much like the abuse that you get for it from the people that you are actually servicing. Right. You mentioned how, um, how, you know, you've been called everything in the, in the book. You probably had things thrown at you. You probably, you know, you probably dealt with all kinds of things. And as a nurse, you know, we've, we deal with a lot of things like that too. And I have seen it impact my other patients. Like just having one patient that is vulgar and mean and rude and impatient and just, just messed up to you. It makes you go into those other rooms differently. It's mm -hmm. hard to go into that next room and be like, hi, I'm your nurse, Ashley. Mm -hmm. After the patient in the other room, you know, was like cussing me out for doing my job, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm just curious to know, like, do you feel that the abuse is affecting? And because yes. you mentioned it before you mentioned, you know, pulling over people who try to annoy you. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like after dealing with this abuse and now you're going to deal with people who are annoying you, mm -hmm. how do you respond? Yeah. So, yes, it, it does happen. And it does happen to me too. Uh, but I try to control it. Um, but we're all human, okay? We're all humans. That part. We, 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 we can't, we, we're just not, we, we're not robots. You know, we're not robots. Um, if we had a issue from the previous call and then we pull somebody over, we might carry that with us into that traffic stop. And then if that end up being another confrontation, you know, it can be, you know, a little more difficult to handle at mm -hmm. that point. So this is why um, I do this. And it was suggested to me by a veteran's cop. Okay, so after you, you know, you're done with a call. When you go back to into the vehicle, you need to take big, deep breaths. You know, trying to calm you down. You know, uh, trying to slow your heart okay, down. Okay, men with the self care, <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, mindful it, meditation. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's it, good. Try, try to do that because it will help you. You're trying to get oxygen to your brain and try, and it will help you think clearly mm -hmm. for the next call for the next call so uh and i think it, it's been helpful yeah. and you do need to breathe uh when you get into a critical incident uh especially uh as you go into it you you need to make sure that you're breathing because i've seen people not breathing mm -hmm. i was like mm -hmm. hey i'll take over hey let me let me take over go ahead and get some water get some water drink some water uh yes so, uh, that human what was aspect. the next question? You brought up the human, you mentioned the human aspect of it, just being human mm -hmm. because you are yes. like, why do we, why do people think that you're going to be, say you're stationed, I don't know how police work goes, but say you're stationed mm -hmm. in front of a protest and you're getting cussed at, you're getting spit at, and you're supposed to be yeah. standing them and protecting these people, right? Mm -hmm. Then you go mm -hmm. and you are, I don't know, putting tickets on people's car and now they're, cursing at you they mad at you they want to run you over all kinds of whatever you know mm -hmm. you deal with that and then it just takes that one person to to respond mm -hmm. to you or to answer you incorrectly for and you all to of that energy goes for to you to just be like boom, explode you yeah. know and it may mm -hmm. not and it may not be you at work it could be your kids at home it could be your wife it could be you know what i mean uh, you're yeah. blowing up somewhere you're responding to it yeah. somewhere you're putting that yeah. energy somewhere yeah I have mm -hmm. a question, like, how do you feel when you hear things, like, especially in this climate of, you know, uh, 2020, um, uh, how mm -hmm. do you feel when you hear things like people calling to defund the police or, you know, um, calling for reform of um, police departments and, and things like that? How do you feel? Like, what are your thoughts on that? I don't think they should defund the police. Mm -hmm. You probably would expect that from me. Uh, yes, because the reason is we need more cops. Um, we need more cops. We need more police officers. Uh, 
And I want people to understand that the reason why you can get up in the morning and get out your house wearing, I don't know, like a little leggings, you have your earphones on, right? Uh, you technically not going to be able to hear anybody behind you with mm -hmm. the earphones on, right. listening to music, and you're running uh, early in the morning. The reason why you can do that is just because of us, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. For the most part. Yeah. You know, so people know you're there. With, with U.S. police officers, like, you know, throughout the, the whole country, you know, nationwide, you know, we are known to be, you know, somebody called 911, we there in minutes, mm -hmm. right? So that gives people a sense of security. Okay. We've had good experiences and, with police officers ourselves within our and, business. And a burglar will take what the burglar before he commits a crime, he would visit the neighborhood, right? First, why he has to do that? Because he wants to make sure if something goes wrong, then he has ways to, you know, evade and, and, and get away. Uh, so they will, Go to that neighborhood first, look at the house, certain houses, see how they would enter the home. And, you know, uh, this is why I patrol the neighborhood sometimes. And most of the time I'm all blacked out uh, and I do it safely. OK, uh, windows down and, I, and I'm looking and I'm looking for break ins, people trying to break into cars, uh, just random person with a hoodie on. It's two o'clock in uh, two o'clock in the morning. So why are you? on the street, all black, you know, with gloves and, and um, uh, some crowbars. Looking um, suspicious. Is <laughs> suspicious. So anybody, any reasonable person would think, you know, hey, this is suspicious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I need to stop that person to ask questions. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and this is where I need to be. Stop the crime before it happens because you don't want it to happen because you don't know if somebody might get hurt. Mm -hmm. So I don't mm -hmm. want it to get there. So I want to stop it before it gets there. Mm -hmm. And that's this is where I want to be all the time. Okay. Okay. So here, to be fair, the defund the police, it's not, it sounds crazy. I honestly think that, that the Democratic Party took that and made it their, I mean, they called it that just to be like clickbait. Does that make sense for it to be as yeah. dramatic as it could be? Because it doesn't make sense. Obviously, we need police. I mean, yeah. if I'm voting, I need to be feel protected. I do want to be able to call yeah. and have a police officer show up. I know I do not want mm -hmm. a social worker at my door. No. Mm -hmm. Like when I call the police. I would call a social worker. Right. Exactly. <laughs> when I call the police, I need the police at my door <laughs> to yeah. come and help me yeah. and save me. OK, so but that is not oh. the gist of of the movement of defund the police. From my understanding, there's there's way more there's more there's way more policy included in that. They're not necessarily saying get rid of the police. Mm -hmm. So so for the other parts, for the Republican Party to make it seem like we really, you know, not we I'm not subscribing to any party. I just want to make that clear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yes. Um, so to. To, for the Republicans to say that, oh, the Democrats are trying to get rid of the police. They don't want law enforcement, blah, blah, blah. Like, that's not realistic. That's not true either. So both no. sides are lying to the people. So I feel like, why aren't we turning our backs on the, both of these parties? That's really what we should be doing. I would. Because I would say mm -hmm. that people aren't. So if we're t talking in terms of like pol politi politics, right, these ideals that we have are really like i would say um grassroots right what um, do you mean hmm? what do you mean like it's not the major it's not mainstream yeah it's okay. not mainstream it's not the major ideals that people in our you know class would have and yeah in our demographic demographics would have so i feel like a lot of what's missing is that um, people don't understand that the media really tells us what they want us to hear, you know, not necessarily the truth or what's happening or what's going on. They tell us what they want us to hear. They tell us what 
will keep us at bay or keep us um, subdued or behaved, right? And also what will keep us separated. And what will keep us separated. Mm -hmm. And I think people don't really do a good job of understanding that like everything that we do is being um, watched and um, analyzed, right? And it would with those analytics, they are then putting into place practices that we're just going to fall into because humans, you know, we just, we're not that smart. Mm -hmm. um, so Dang, don't um, downplay us. This is how we hear. Well, I mean, yes, we're smart, but you know what I mean? You mm -hmm, know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the sense that like people don't know, like telling people, okay, like let's just turn a turn away from both parties. Then they're like, okay, then what? You don't understand. Then what? Because yeah. as individuals, that we don't really like you and I and you, we search for personal development. We search for knowledge. We seek, mm -hmm. um, you know, just different avenues to, to be able to learn new things, but everybody doesn't do that. Some people are fine with getting everything, all of the information that they know from the 10 o'clock news. They're fine with that, you know? So how do you take a society of people who have been spoon fed information for so long and, um, they really have us in this situation where, like, all we're getting is receiving information. How do you get this pe these people to say, hmm, let me do research on myself to go and find more information that may, in fact, contradict the information that they're giving me, right? But, like, that initial... Just to see another side. To see another side, we don't mm -hmm. have that. You know, we don't have that. Yeah. Like, so, if you never moved to Oklahoma, yeah. you would have never seen another side. Well, not never, but you wouldn't have seen the side... You know, you know, like you said, you said that's caused you to become this. Yeah, yeah. you say moving to Oklahoma, but I have, you know, I have a different theory. Oh, do you now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but speaking of Oklahoma, I have a question for you because I feel like somebody who knows okay. people in Oklahoma should know this. <laughs> this is very okay. stereotypical of me. <laughs> Sorry in advance, <laughs> but I'm just going to do it. Okay. So um, what does uh, stand by mean? what president trump said uh, <laughs> what does it mean okay so i know some that, people know about, <laughs> about that statement i have no idea get out of here I no i i don't i don't uh when he when he said proud boys i'm like proud boys i, I, I didn't know that that was Pro uh, Ooh, they left you out of that <laughs> so yeah you haven't answered <laughs> ashley's second part of her question like being a blue okay. life this is the parts where you become a black life again yes this is the part you become okay, a black so, life yes so so i, I didn't serve about the blue lives right yes you know, right mm -hmm. so as a black person yeah you know, uh, i felt so sort of the same you know because i still get those uh uh what's the I, I don't remember the this how how they say it um but it's basically you get the flack like some people back. will tell you some people it, it's just you. i'm sorry no i'm just trying to help you find your words <laughs> yeah I, I i can't remember the words but but it's basically you got those the same people like you know black person will tell you um, why, you know, for example, why do you talk so proper or why are you dressed like that? Why are you, uh, with certain group of people? Why, you know, it's, it's not because I kind of like white people or Indian people or Mexican people, uh, for a lot of us, me in particular, it's just because the activities or, or what I'm interested into. You know, it's basically these these people are more into those those things that I'm interested in. Yeah, like you your interests just why, line up. Yeah. But so we're talking I, about like, like to, the instances where you are around those people where you're where those your um you know, your activities and your interests line up. When when do you remember you're black in the room? Because I know you have your moments. I I I I, I mean I do. <laughs> Okay, you know, and that's what we're asking you to share, Black Life, please. 
I mean, I have my moments where, you know, it, it, it just like you around black people, you know, your friends or whatnot, you know, you feel, you feel comfortable, but no, sometimes you I feel like I think we're asking outside, not when you're, it. no, not, you see, is he going around the question? I think he's going around the question because, you know, <laughs> I, I'm asking you when you are around your friends who are of mm-hmm. a not different black. nationality, okay? A different nationality. Okay. Yeah, they're not black. Maybe, you know, they're. Your Oklahoma friends. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes, your Oklahoma. Friends. I don't know what your Oklahoma okay. friends look like. So but you weren't specific. So I'm thinking black. Yeah. People, you know, so black I'm saying friends. when That's you are when you're around them because you're you're still a cop. You're blue life no matter where you go, right? Once you once you. Yeah. I guess swear your oath, you you're that's it, right? So you're a blue, you're a blue life, and then you're a black life. So when you're not in your uniform, you said when you're in your uniform, uh-huh. you're not treated as a black life. But when you're out of your uniform, how are you treated among you know around people who are not black? Okay, uh, it it goes both ways, you know. Uh, I had this experience once, you know, I, uh, I think I went to Jiffy Loops to get uh, oil change, okay? And uh, when I entered the place, you know, there was a white lady there. Mm-hmm. And and I, you can automatically feel the vibe, you know, the negative vibe from her, you know, you can definitely see it. And and as, as I started talking and then, you could tell the vibe change and I don't know what it was and I don't know what she was thinking, but to me, I felt like she thought I was just a, a black dude from the ghetto, uh, I probably dangerous, uh, would probably, you know, you know, trying to break in the place, you know, but when she heard me talking and she kind of like, Oh, okay. So, uh, that's not who I thought he was. Oh, I have black friends, uh, black family too. I think her, or I think he was her daughter married somebody from Africa or something like that. Uh, she was explaining to me all about that. So, mm-hmm. and in my mind, I was thinking, wow, okay. You had to <laughs> so speak up that, to say something. That was a so little what? experience that I, I, I had in, in Oklahoma. Wow. Okay, so yeah. you 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 feel what it's like to be both on yes. both ends. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Here's a question. And usually, that I have. when they figure out, usually when they figure out, okay, oh, you're in the military. Oh, you're a cop. Damn. Oh, you're a good oh, black. You're, doing you're this. a good black. Oh, okay. So then <laughs> it's all fine. You know, it's just like, oh, okay, you're one of us. You know, yeah. I do feel that. You know, one of so, us. Yeah. What does that mean? So. <laughs> I don't know. That, I'm just saying. You're one of us you know. until you know that stand, that standby <laughs> turns that, that standby turns into fire. <laughs> now, because <laughs> standby means so hold your weapons, right? Yeah, I, I <laughs> standby means hold your weapon, and you know, <clears throat> I have. It's interesting because. I feel like you and I have had very controversial conversations in this realm, right? In this category. And on this podcast, I'm being very intentional about um, the conversations that I have and just the input that I give. And I think, though, when I want to have a conversation about for because, you know, bringing it back to um, how you know, just bringing it back to the the justice system or the justice industry Mm -hmm. and you being a cop, right? Mm -hmm. Do you find yourself, um, like at what point does your job end? Right. So if you, let's say I'm a, a person on the street and you apprehend me and, um, you find that I've, you know, I fall into the category of suspicious person and you find that I have committed um a criminal act right Mm -hmm. so what what are the steps kind of like walk me through what that is from your perspective because I feel like on the outside right we talk about the 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 criminal system and the justice system and um how kind of like once you get in it's really hard especially people of color 
um mm-hmm. once you're in the system you're in the system you, you once you, you even if you get out you find your way back like it's just the way the system is set up right so as a mm-hmm. officer how do you i guess play into that um and do you see yourself playing into that and do you ever witness it you said yeah, yeah do you ever witness it and do you ever go back and see like where did this person end up you know like what what did they end up getting is that okay so in the uh criminal justice system okay it's not just law enforcement okay mm-hmm. there's also the courts right and yes, corrections the yes. three branch three bodies yes i did take social um, studies <laughs> so uh, my job and and i have no leeway if you committed a crime and a muscle tie especially if they're uh it, it depends on the crime okay and i might have officer discretion so you have that okay it depends on the crime but there's certain crimes where i do not have a say and this is what i have to do mm-hmm. okay if it is a felony i do not have officer discretion that's what i have to do because this is the law and I enforced the law. This is why I was, I took an oath to uh, do my job, you know, to fulfill these laws and I have to enforce them, unfortunately. And, and I have no say to those. And, and sometimes you find officers that, you know, the person that, that committed a crime or you know at as a family member the officer have to be removed himself because you don't want to be uh you don't want because that can create some uh conflict of interest uh, conflict of interest there we go you're welcome Jeez, what's <laughs> happening to me thank you <laughs> no, so you're much good, you're good. <laughs> so, <laughs> so exactly uh so sometimes that you know most, most of the time, the officer would have to remove himself from the situation and have another officer to deal with it. Uh, so I have no say to certain crimes and I, I just can't. And okay. I have to take action by the law. Okay. So at what point then does it, I guess at what point while doing your job does the person turn from a human with human aspects to like a body that I have to deliver to a jailhouse. Okay. So for me personally, I cannot speak for any other officers, Mm -hmm. me personally, because I know what's in my heart and what's, what's going through my mind. Mm -hmm. Uh, I treat everybody as they want to be treated. Okay. Uh, I found people that are really, you know, um, uh, compliant. You know, hey, this is what was done, and you are now under arrest, mm-hmm. and I need to put these handcuffs on you, and and I have no other choice. And you have these other people that are gonna make you work for it, and and you have to put that person, you know, you have to get that person into custody. And but at the end of the day, you know, I still have, you know, I was still. No, I would use force, then I would have to come down and, and I will still talk to that person, you know, uh, with dignity and respect, uh, even though that person wants to stay up there, but I will have to come down mm-hmm. once I have that person into custody, I have mm-hmm. that person in control. Uh, and this is part of my job because I'm being, you know, uh, watch uh judge you know by the public even though uh that person you know made me use force on that person but i Mm -hmm. still have the duty to you know treat that person with respect okay and and every cop should be at that level so as for me this is what i do Mm -hmm. um and sometimes you know later on that same person will just talk to me normally you know, with no conflict, no way to mm-hmm. like that. And sometimes they will even apologize, you know, for doing that. It's just they then want to go to jail and they were trying to get away. 
you know. Yeah. And this it's understandable. Whole conflict, this whole separation of blue lives and black lives. Yes, it's been something that's been building up for a long time, but we know that it really does sum up to the very simplicity of there are good cops, there are bad cops, there are good, you know, black people, there are bad black people. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and it's like, I think that, you know, one party is showing like, cops are the best. And then the other party is like, cops are the worst. It's like very two opposite sides. So I do feel like we're, we're all kind of being manipulated to be against each other. Yeah. But in the end of the day, like, I mean, you, you mentioned it earlier, we are human. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think too, just also like coming off of what you're saying, as far as the division, like, how do you, I've always, how do you feel as a, um, done as a um officer when you see you know certain videos on the internet or on the news of officers doing things or um being in a situation where someone is losing their life or being mistreated like excessive force is being used mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. what how do you kind of perceive these things as an officer? Do you see them when you watch them? Are you analyzing like, oh, maybe they could have did this different? Or are you looking at it like, I think I would have handled it the same? You know, like, what's your perspective when you see? Because for us, you know, it can be shock, like just the everyday person. Mm -hmm. It can mm -hmm. be shocking. Like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe this officer did that. But for you, as somebody who is, you know, part of this profession, mm -hmm. kind of, how, what do you see? Okay. Uh, obviously, some of those videos are very shocking, you know, mm -hmm. to see. But at the same time, I cannot sit behind the uh, computer or watching the video to say he should have done this or this is the way I would have done this. Because mm -hmm. why? I wasn't there. You know, mm -hmm. I wasn't put in that situation. So I wouldn't have known how to handle that situation until you there you, you you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. uh i could have taken a different route but there's nothing to say that this is what i would have done for sure mm -hmm. because i was i wasn't put into that situation so every situation that an officer is in is and the way he handles it is just because that's the best way he could have handled that situation mm -hmm. yeah. based on his ability his training his, uh, judgment. his moral his status, system. judgment, mm -hmm. and all that, because mm -hmm. every officer is different. Mm -hmm. So this is where I'll, I'm, I'm going to come in with having the reform into the police, uh, because we need more training, we need more resources, we need mm -hmm. uh, all of that so that we can, you know, become better police officers, better human beings, mm -hmm. better uh, officer of the law so that we can yeah. handle this type of situation yeah. yeah because when those critical incident happens you cannot sit and be like time out let me think about this because yeah. it's happening right now on the fly and i have to take action as it unfolds right right so that's a good point and you know these questions keep they just keep coming to oh, me first of all okay <laughs> i'm about to stop her because we gotta move on to the ratings. i just have one last question <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So when we hear, so I want to talk about really quickly the, just not this case specifically, but in cases where um, officers aren't being like um, indicted or in a case where an officer is in an inter is interacting with someone and the civilian ends up dead or deceased due to the officer killing them. Um, I love how you try to wrap that in a bow somehow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay um how do you feel about you know officers who are not who are getting acquitted or who are not facing criminal charges um even though somebody may have uh died wrongfully due to that officer's error or you know misjudgment how do you feel that officers should be treated in situations like that okay so that question i wish i had a prosecutor friend with me you know, mm -hmm. I have a friend that is a prosecutor at the courthouse, mm -hmm. but uh, I, it's a very, it's a two different entities. So I know how to enforce the law. I don't know how to, you know, I don't know the uh, justice system process because numerous time I'll charge for charges mm -hmm. and that charge end up being dropped. Mm -hmm. 
I did my job. I know that. You know, if I arrested somebody for DWI, they end up having it drop. At least I know that person it wasn't on the street driving and could have killed somebody that night. Mm-hmm. You know, at least I know that. So the justice system is different. You know, you have plea deals, you know, all this stuff going on. They look at all the facts. So when an officer, you know, they get, you know, indicted or acquitted or something or get acquitted, uh, it's just because of all the facts that they put forward in front of a jury. And it's usually civilian mm-hmm. of all classes that are, that are going to talk about this uh, thing, uh, the, uh, the trial or whatnot. And they're going to make a decision whether or not that officer needs to be indicted, uh, right? Uh, and indicted or, you know, the, uh, what's the word? <laughs> it's been a long day. It's okay. Yeah, it's it's right. I know. <laughs> Man. Uh, Sorry. What you do is, is oh, hard guilt, work. Guilt, guilt, guilty or not guilty. There you go. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I, I wouldn't be able to answer you, like, you know, honestly why mm-hmm. do they do because uh, a lot of times uh, a lot of people don't know this but when a critical incident happens because a lot of times i use case laws you know case laws uh, are the reason for me to do certain things but let's say a lot of people would say why you have to search my car well, based on this case law, you know, I have the right to, and according to the law, I have the right to search your car mm-hmm. because, hey, I'm talking to you, I smell marijuana, and I see, like, this little baggie here. I have to search the whole car based on that case okay, law. Okay, but because now it's legal. When you go to court, <laughs> when you go to court, they're going to pull that case law based on that case law. This is yeah. what the law is going to say. Well, according to this Case law, blah, 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 blah. That's what they're going to say. That's why he pulled you over. Mm -hmm. And they're using a lot of case laws. And so that's the furthest you can go. That's the furthest you can go. Mm -hmm. So I I love that you mentioned, you've mentioned it multiple times, that these are separate entities. That Mm -hmm. is not in my scope. That is not my, that's not what I practice. This Mm -hmm. is the part that I practice. And you guys are being punished for a part (laughs) you have nothing to do with. Right. Okay. Like, yeah. like you cannot change the laws. You are just mm-hmm. responsible for enforcing those laws. Yeah. Right. Yes. So, I mean, you know, me and my analogies. Right. So I'm thinking about I want to give a quick analogy just quickly to that little, uh, scenario. Sorry. Oh, my. Oh, Ash's analogies <laughs> in it. This is how long our episodes. Sound. This is how long our episodes have been that we have time for multiple segments. <laughs> so this is Ash's analogies. Get this. Okay. Don't get me wrong. This is. I'm making it super basic. It's very far away from being a cop. But, oh, I I should probably just let it play in the background while I talk about it. Yeah, that's what I'm going to (laughs) do. So you're about to rap or something. Yeah, that's what it's an analogy, okay? You haven't heard about my analogies? Okay. I think that it's equivalent to, like, you see how um, in grocery stores, um, the people on the floor stocking the shelves, right? So say we want to start a revolution and we want to get... I'm just going to pick on the Goya brand right now. We want to get Goya brand off the shelves, Mm -hmm. right? So instead of us going to the people who are buying the Goya brand and like bringing it and stocking the shelves and Mm -hmm. signing the contract to allow them to work, we're harassing the people stocking the shelves. Like that is not their, that is not not their job in their scope of practice to decide whether or not Goya goes on the shelf. Their job is to, stock the shelves when with Goya what is given up. to yeah. them yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 so yeah. that's my analogy people hey <laughs> that's, a good one. that's a good one but i mean hey we d- still had to ask the question because i know that you know people feel this way mm-hmm. um like i said at this this conversation i've really been playing devil's advocate um but yeah so before you go go into your questions i, I just wanted to make a quick uh comment on something we said comment really yeah oh uh, well yeah so uh, they really target us as police officers but they never really target the justice system really as mm-hmm. they targets us as police officers right mm-hmm. so 
I'm not the reason why a black person committed the same crime as a white person and the white person get probation and that black person get 26 years behind bars. Mm -hmm. I'm not the reason why this happened. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, he committed the crime. The white person committed the crime, but it, it came down to the justice system that are making these decisions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, why not just go about them as well? That way, to right? We formed the, the the whole justice system. Yeah. And the thing is, is that people are doing it. It's just not as popular, I guess. I don't know if protesting is yes. popular. It's because we see the police. Like, we can see, touch, feel, and hear them. That's why. Yes. It's somebody the to first blame. Point. Yeah. And it yes. also, the media yes. is helping and blaming the police. You yeah. know what I mean? Yes. And, and yeah. in turn, the media is also helpful in blaming black people, blaming black lives for mm -hmm. crime, for injustices. So, so would you say that police are really just slaves to the criminal justice system of America? He's like, not slaves. I mean, <laughs> we, I volunteered for this. so underappreciated. I, would I agree. Yeah. I agree. You guys yeah. are. You know, because we would die for, for ourselves. Yeah. And arms will way to protect a citizen. Yeah. This yeah. is what a good cop would do. Yeah. And a lot of us are like that. Mm -hmm. All, a lot of us have that mindset. Yeah. yeah. You guys are good people. I mean, there are good cops. And it hurts me to know that people are, like, being mean to you. Stop being mean. <laughs> Stop bullying people, period. It doesn't matter. Stop yeah. bullying people. Mm -hmm. If people are being mean, it's because they're hurt. And the only people who hurt people are hurt people. Mm -hmm. So, like, you adding to that is not helping, you know? Yeah. So, I really don't. It's so interesting because it's like both sides are screaming the same things. Mm -hmm. You both want to be heard. You both feel like you're not safe. You, but you know, it's like both sides are screaming the same exact argument. Yeah. Listen, you're hated, but you walk around with the grace of God daily, okay? Yes. So, let yes. them continue to hate. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So, you know, because I'm the structure, I got to do my job. This is just my job. <laughs> but I'm going to ask this this final question before we move on to the ratings. What kind okay. of, um, first of all, what kind of business are you looking to open and and what kind of entrepreneur do you, can, do you consider yourself? So I have a lot of ideas. Um, I think right now uh, I would be a entrepreneur. Yes. Okay. Uh, there we go. Mm -hmm. Um I haven't started yet uh, because I'm so focusing on other things like uh, and to my profession to be exact. Um, uh, I don't know if you heard about that saying, you know, you use your eight to five jobs to get out of the rat yeah, race. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, so that's basically what I'm doing and, and I'm just trying to be the best I can be and, and what I'm doing right now. Uh, because it will go a long way. And what I'm really looking to, to start uh, is uh, uh, I'm interested in the uh, import-export business. Mm. Um, and I have so many ideas, uh, uh, especially uh, one of my ideas involves where I'm from, Haiti. Uh, I don't want to put it all out there and right. to the podcast because somebody might right, say that. Right, don't want to say that. But, it, you know, it's just basically braining, you know, uh, the... Important. You know how things take Haiti. so long to get to Haiti. Right? Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, let's say... Uh, to, yeah, really brief. So... We don't really have Amazon in Haiti, right? Mm -hmm. right? I don't think we do. We don't have that ability to just go on the website and order something and get it two days later, mm -hmm. right? So this is something where I would be, I would come in and help out with that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so that's and, pretty much with, a challenge, or that's a that's you you want to bring a solution yeah. to that, yeah, to that challenge, a solution to to that, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's exciting. That's exactly. awesome. I, you know, it's interesting because. I feel that you're very passionate about your current field as being like being a, a cop. Mm -hmm. So do you ever think about entrepreneurship in that realm within that industry? Because I mean, that's what this whole season is about. Like, you know, challenging your industry yes. some way. So mm -hmm. have, 
in what ways have you um, thought of using your entrepreneurship or, you know, or just making any changes? What, what, you know, basic level changes are you making in your industry? Uh, or do you want to make? Specifically to be the best I can be and uh, yeah. make a impact basically, you know, do the job, you know, do the best I can, you know, just take time to go, uh, to complete every, every situation, you know, because, uh, I can tell you, you know, sometimes that, you know, we want to rush it, you know, but I just want to make sure that I'm doing everything right. And, and, uh, the victim is getting the help that the victim needs, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that they need, uh, other resources and, uh, and to help gain justice, um, uh, as far as, uh, becoming an entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneur, um, uh, yeah, that is something that I would want to, you know, it's a position that I would want to be at in the future. Mm -hmm. Um, and I can tell you a lot of cops are entrepreneur too, oh, as yeah. well, while they're cops doing stuff on the side either they, uh, whether they are real estate agents mm. uh, they have a, a loan uh, loan business mm -hmm. or they can if if they have the time to do it they will do it yeah. and we do have some times in our hands to be able to accomplish some of those uh, endeavors I would say okay that's good all right mm -hmm. well we're gonna move on to our next segment okay so now we're gonna rate what are we rating? The criminal justice system? I mean, not the criminal, that's not even your system. Is that? Well, he is part of the criminal justice system. You're just the enforcement yes. part. The enforcement part of it. Yes. Okay, so yeah. what are we rating exactly, Junie? Ooh. Let's rate, how about, <laughs> ooh, let's do, let's rate the relationship that the community has with police. Ooh. And do some ashes and roses about that. Like, what, what does our relationship look like, and where do we... Do you want to start off? You know, yeah, yeah sure. Oh, you just <laughs> what? Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I can say I, I can say a lot uh, about you know police officers with community relation. Okay, yeah. uh, so, so just, we want to know what the pro, it, it, what the po roses are, the positives, yeah, and the, what the cons are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So try your best to oh, okay. structure them in that way. Yeah. Right. So go ahead. Oh, okay. You want the pros and, and, and the cons? Yeah. yeah so let's start with the and the roses. Yeah. So let's start with the roses, oh. which is the pros. Okay. The pros, uh, I would say, uh, the pros is that helps me as a police officer or uh, anybody in law enforcement to do the job. You know, mm -hmm. it helps uh, knowing what's going on. Uh, a lot of times, you will find uh, some communities will have neighborhood watch, and that's a way to help uh, deter. Uh, burglars and anybody that wants to commit crime in that neighborhood and that's a very good tool uh, for us uh, uh, the cons is that um, when you don't have a community behind you it's very difficult to do your job it's very difficult to go into a neighborhood and hey what happened how did he get shot did anybody see anything nope no nope. so it makes it very hard to mm -hmm. bring you know Justice. justice to that person yeah. that was shot you know yeah. and it, it's it can be very frustrated and and that case was just gonna end up being unresolved mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. and and that's what i would say so that's why it's very important to have a uh, good community relation with you know, good relation with your community yeah. and uh and i would say i'm, I'm not saying because the you know, being conservative or Republican conservative, you know, it's, you know, <laughs> but I found that if you are in a Republican uh, county or area demographic, mm -hmm. it's the, you feel very appreciated, you know, oh, yeah. when you work in those areas. Yeah, because they raise their kids to respect the police. As opposed to, let's say, if you're working in Austin or Portland uh, a or Chicago. A democratic area. Yes. <laughs> democratic area. You find more crime. You find 
where you, you know you get those protests and the uh, looting and everything i can mm -hmm. tell you right now where i live in the county that i live in we have some protests but they're very big but we had absolutely no looting no uh businesses being burned and everything. right but you know uh, you know don we talked about being human yeah. right yes and we talked about the fact that like when somebody um is cursing at you all day how that makes you respond right just as a human you respond to something you mm -hmm. respond to a stimulus or whatever so as humans we all require you know our basic needs our basic needs need to be met in order for us to be the best human being we can be, I guess, you know? Mm -hmm. So right, you got to right. have your food. You got to feel safe. You got to feel secure. You have to have good self-esteem. Right. These are all basic things that have to be met. Now, when you're going to into areas that these basic needs are not being met for some people, then yes, of course, they're going to participate in what you consider to be crime, but what they consider to be Survival. eating, mm -hmm. eating, feeding their family. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like there's that balance and we have to understand that the reason why these communities of people exist, it is a result and a huge part of what capitalism brings. It is. We can't act like it doesn't play into it because it does. OK. OK. Well, I understand your point. I really understand your point. But why is it in Republican areas? You, you don't really see much of that issue. And when you look at, we, we don't want to put the two against each other. But they got money. I, I mean, <laughs> but really, but this when is you what think I about see. it, right? This is right. what I see, really. Yeah. You so know, the Republicans have it's just money. Because they're run, it's just no. It's it's just who it's been running by, you know. And you're looking at California, even Austin, like right next door, right here, Austin, um, the capital, you know, the state capital. Mm -hmm. It's not looking too good right now. You know, because you have a mayor that's allowing, you know, people to live on the street. Um, if you leave my county, as soon as you enter Austin, you see tents everywhere, trash. It's just like California. People, people, it, it's, so people it's, are poor over there. It's crazy. They, they have less money. So poor. we're saying the same thing. Poor. It's, 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 I'm not saying there's oh, not are they doing? here. Are they doing it in protest? But, are you talking about tents? In protest, living outside. Are you talking about homelessness? No, they're not. I'm talking about homelessness. Okay, you know? so okay. And so you have a issue... city. You have a city. Listen, you have a city that is bringing a lot of taxes, money from you know, tax you know, bring taxes from all these areas like housing, you know, all that stuff to build a brand new rec center. I think it was some kind of. You know, they wanted to make it bigger or something like that. Why not spending that money, you know, to help those homeless people or like a you know a place where you can put them or you know if you were if you if you care about them, you know, instead of telling them, hey, you can't live on the street, telling the police department you cannot, you know, enforce those rules or give them tickets for sleeping on the street or uh I mean, uh, do whatever on the street it, it's just like why not do that why that here very interesting because i want to know issue. like if i'm and sleeping on this places where street. i can take <laughs> people from the street like i've taken people from the street to a facility before it's you know i get called by like a, a citizen, homeless hey, shelter we have some yes okay uh usually we give them uh direction we actually take them like uh, and to be honest with you, sometimes we just like, hey, you're just going to have to go to Austin and, and see one of those because we have assistant living places in Austin. Mm. And, and, but they're not using it effectively and it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. But not here where I live, you know, in the county that I live in mm -hmm. because gotcha. we don't have that issue. Why these two government entities have different. Yeah, I mean the way they do the way that, that they're issue handling is it. different. Why is that? Why yeah. is that? You know, yeah. that's this is why I cannot understand. That's a good I mean that's so, a valid question. It's a valid yeah. question. Yeah. It's it's not because they don't have money or uh, both places have, you know, Austin is very expensive. Yeah. So it's here. It's very expensive. You know. Yeah. So um, I just so, feel like if 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 you're encountering me on the street, like trying to sleep or set up a tent 
It's probably because I have nowhere else to go, dude. Right. <laughs> so if you right. give, my first so choice. if you give me a ticket, I think I'm just gonna be like, yeah. okay, well, how do you think I got here? All these, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hand you the ticket back. <laughs> I'll be like, let me put this with my other tickets. <laughs> um, but I guess I'll terrible. give my ashes. Yeah, and roses. Ashes. Um, <clears throat> I would say that my ashes are, of course, just the negative um, relationship that I feel that as a community we have with police officers. Because I'm, I'm gonna be real with you. Um, you know, I'm also an immigrant from Haiti, and my for, my formative years were really in Brooklyn, um, New York, and then you know coming here to Columbus. I've never had like a um, super negative experience with um police officers but i can say that i've never had like feelings of you know like when a police officer comes around like i'm on alert i'm on high alert maybe not necessarily because of something that i've personally encountered but because more people not just on tv but there are actual people in my life that i can you know have conversations with that can say that they've had you know, negative encounters with the, with the officers. So I would say that that's an ash. The fact that like so many of us have a, my automatic thing is to go on defense when I see a cop or when I see an officer. And I would um, label that as an ash because I feel like, you know, they are supposed to be protecting and serving, you know, and if you're sp supposed to be protecting and serving me, then I shouldn't be having these feelings towards you. So I would count that as um, an ash. I would say um, another ash is um, the fact that I do think that as a community, we don't really take into consideration what cops have to go through on a daily basis until like it's someone we know personally, mm -hmm. you know, just being friends with um, with Dawn. Like there are times where I'm like, dude, listen, if you want to quit, I wouldn't judge you know what I mean <laughs> so I would say that's an ash um for the roses I do think that there are really good cops out there I really 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 do think that there are good cops um I know more than one person or one guy who has become a cop and like I know them to be good people so I will say that um it's a noble it's definitely a noble profession so um shout out to you guys um you know, that's a rose. And I, res I respect police officers to the extent that they respect me as a human. So, mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Oh, I still I still get scared or, you know, nervous when I get pulled over, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Even that's I was a crazy, cop. right? Even I was a cop, I was like, yeah. oh. That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> I don't know what it is. My heartbeat just dropping. It's like you just <laughs> Once you see up, the you lights, it's like, boom, uh, drop. I know. Once they pull it, driving behind you, I'm like, shit, they about to right. pull me Right, and then over. you just, you start thinking of all kinds of things. Like, you're not yeah. breaking any laws, but yeah, you just, just living feel. Your life. Yeah. Right, but you just all of a sudden feel guilty or you feel yeah. like something, you know, you're just scared. You you never know how it could go. Like, it could really go left just by you pulling your ID out. Yeah. Like, it could really go left. Like, just knowing that, but at the same time, are we conditioned to, to be scared that, that way? way? Just like cops are conditioned to be scared of black people. That, yeah. Like, it's mm, so weird. Yeah. Like, it, I feel like we're being controlled. So, ashes. Yeah. But we didn't talk about how cops really started out as slave catchers, but. Mm. Another another story another out. episode. Probably. Let's go on to the ashes because you have a right. We went into two hours and you. Yeah, it's very just... short. It's, it's very short. Go ahead. It's about being nervous. So, okay. So I was driving home. I was in full uniform. Okay. So I know the area and I know some of the guys patrol that area. And it was a little hill, and I went over the speed limit a little bit, and uh, he pulled me over. <laughs> you broke the law. You breaking the law, deputy. You out here breaking the law, <laughs> deputy. Ooh. Hey, it, it was it was a little hill, and then I, I kind of like trying to get home. Okay, yeah, so I know yeah. everybody does the same thing. Human. Um, and then when if, exactly, you know, <laughs> and then when he came to the to my door, and I look at him, I'm like, "Hey, Davis." <laughs> oh wow! And I had to apologize. I'm so sorry for speeding in your area. Oh. I was like, you're speeding, man. Like, okay, it's like. Is that how we get like, out of it? speeding tickets? I'm like, hey, Davis. <laughs> right, no, call, him, just, call him on Davis. What if his name is Henry over here? 
<laughs> Call them all David. Know, right? But it was back. it was funny. We we both laugh about it. You know, uh-huh. hey, David, so I'm so sorry. I was like, oh yeah. Try uh-huh. not to speed. I know, I know. So okay. even us can get tickets. But yeah. for me personally, I don't get tickets to police officers, um, healthcare pro- uh, uh, professionals. Hey, I was about um, to come for you, but okay. Correction officers. Because if I get shot or need medical attention, you know, I don't want that nurse that to I gave a ticket you gave a few days ago. You know? <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. And remember me. that we are, we are literally like, if, if it was, a, if it was like an Avenger team of service, like we would yeah. be partners. Okay. Because we yeah. go through a lot of this. I mean, not, we don't put our lives in danger the way that you guys do. I mean, uh, yeah, we do, I guess, sickness with, with illnesses, yeah. but, um, I just feel like we relate so much in that, in that sense. Mm-hmm. So I feel you. Mm-hmm. I feel what you. do you give tickets yeah. to friendly? Um, I've gotten tickets in my scrubs. Disrespect. Okay, I would say if I pull somebody over, uh, I rarely give tickets. I do not like to give tickets, mm. but I have, you know, other reasons why I pull you over and, and I just, and I don't just pull you over for just to pull you over. You know, I make sure that I have power cards to pull you over. It's just because you broke the law. It's an infraction. It's a traffic infraction. So um, I have power cause to pull you over. And that's me being proactive, making sure mm-hmm. everybody is doing what they're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And uh, but you don't uh, rarely I give t- okay. tickets okay. for speeding. Okay, good cop. Unless you're 10 and over. If you're 10 or over, <laughs> you yes. You in Texas, I'll give so that don't really help me. Yeah, it doesn't. Matter. But, you, but you're a good cop. Well, good I don't know about in your you're, area. You're a good guy. But for me, this is this is what I did. Yeah. Okay. I think you're well, a good person, and that makes you a good cop. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. The I like person. To be transparent with everybody. So yeah. I don't mind saying what I'm saying because. Yeah. Know. Yeah. What are your ashes and roses? So I'm just gonna give like one ash, one rose because. But I think people want to hear this conversation too. I do. I do too. But yeah. We gotta wrap this up because you tired. I'm tired. We gotta. We gotta go. Yeah, <laughs> so know. okay. So. My number one ash is the fact that this has turned in, this has turned political. They have made, like, if you're on blue lives, you represent one side, one political party. If you're on black lives, you represent another side. Mm -hmm. And I think that is so messed up because how dare you question a black life about valuing a black life? Like, who are you to question that? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so, like I said, I'm not choosing either party, but like when... You know, um, Biden leaned leaned in and said, "Oh, you're not black if you if you don't vote for me." That's exactly mm-hmm. what that whole Democratic Party. That's what it feels like to me. It feels like you've just attached yourself to Black Lives Matter, mm-hmm. right? Why are you doing four like that? Every four years they come out, and look, they do that. I understand that they attach themselves to Black Lives Matter, so then they make mm-hmm. you feel like if you don't vote for me, you don't think Black Lives Matter. And to me, as a black life, you don't have the right to tell me that. Yeah. As a black mm-hmm. as a black life that loves other black lives and takes care of black lives and grew up with black lives, mm-hmm. you don't have the right that to tell me that. Walk around black? That rock right. You don't have the right to tell me that. So you, even you, as a black cop, as a blue life and a black life, who are they to say that you don't value black lives being you have a black life, you got children, you got you know what I mean? Right. That doesn't make sense. You rather vote for Trump. Right. Well, nobody's saying who you voting for here. I mean, I think hey, your patriotism I'm, I'm gives right it now. away. I don't know who to vote to. I might not vote yeah. this year, but I need to. I need to choose somebody, but I don't know yet. Yes, yeah. yes. You don't have to decide on the on you the don't. ashes and I was roses. Just messing with you. <laughs> yes. So that's my biggest takeaway, and I'm not going to say that the Republican Party is not doing it too, because the Republican Party is, you know, making it seem like, you know, if you think Black Lives Matter blue lives don't matter to you and it's like no it is not that black and white okay it's just not it never it never can be like that right it's not it's not that black and blue exactly so that's my (laughs) ash my um rose like i I had mentioned uh just briefly that i've we've had good experiences within our business we've had good experiences with cops we've had you know um the encounters that we've had with them has dealt with, you know, they've had to come and answer to, like, dementia calls. And I feel like they've done a great job mm-hmm. answering. They answer quickly. They are thoughtful of us. They're nice to us. Yeah, shout out to uh, Blendon Township Police. 
I'm gonna be- bleep that out because I don't need people knowing where we are. But oh, okay. <laughs> I thought we safety were tips. Trying to bleep some of mine too. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. I feel you. I was I was really trying not to give where I'm at. Like, like what area? area. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, what area? Exactly. Right. But yeah, so um, so yeah, so we, I've had good experiences when it comes to that. So. I know that good cops exist. I'm not going to be blinded by the idea that, oh, my goodness, all cops are evil. I'm going to need them one day. Mm-hmm. Okay? We need them. Yes, we need yes. them. And um, my friends need to stay employed, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. And I, all the cops out there, seriously, like, the good cops, stay safe out there. Yeah. Stay safe. I'm sorry for, you know, the Two abuse thousand. that you guys are getting. Um, I'm sorry for the... The fact that you guys have been painted as this villain because it's crazy because you guys actually relate to black lives a lot because black lives have been vi- villainized as well. So it's like yeah. it's crazy how much we have so much in common, but we cannot find middle ground. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so we end our we end our show with a quote of the day. We leave our people with a quote of the day to leave them hopeful, maybe inspired. Maybe something to uh, make them laugh. Just something to keep on their minds. Mm-hmm. So um, I will start with my quote. Then, Don, I'll have you share your quote. And then Junie will leave us off like she always does. Okay. So All my right. quote is, unity is strength. And I'm going to need y'all. You, you know where I got that from. Just say it in French for me, please. Yeah. Uh-huh. You want to say it in French for us? Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. So that is on the Haitian flag. That's the motto. Um, unity is strength. And I feel like in this, um, when it comes to this topic, the goal should be finding a way to unite, not mm-hmm. to continue to divide ourselves. It just doesn't make sense. We obviously yeah. need cops. Cops, you obviously need citizens because why else would you be doing your job? You know, like then you got nothing to do without us. So it's like we need each other. So let's come together. That's where we will find our strength. And hopefully we can become a decent country. Goodness, we looking bad out in these right. streets. We need to unite so that we can plan the revolution. Yes. Know? What ro- what quote do you have for us, Don? Okay, so my quote is, your future is hidden in your daily routines. Mm. My future not looking too uh, great then. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm hustling so every day. I, I, really so like, every day. I, I really like that because I'm thinking, you know, uh, every day you should look to, you should look forward to do uh, any little bitty things that can help you in the future. So mm-hmm. I think, you know, small goals are very important to achieve bigger goals. So, mm-hmm. and this is why, I, this is what comes to mind whenever I read that quote. Nice. nice I cool. like that one. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, this was a great conversation. I think yeah. um, it was a good one. Uh, mm-hmm. I think there's so much more that we could say, but we don't got the time. Right. Um, I know. I wanted to say a lot more. Hey, yeah. part two. <laughs> let's, part two. let's see. Part right, two. Right. So um, I'm going to end us off with my quote of the day. Thank you once again, Dawn, for coming and joining us for um, this episode where we were challenging the criminal You're justice industry. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. And my quote as we go off... Um, for today is healing doesn't mean the damage never existed. It means the damage no longer controls our lives. So I think as um, black people in this country, like, yeah, we've been through a lot, but you know, that doesn't have to control us. It doesn't have to, we don't have to keep attaching that to our trauma. Like, yes, it's part of our trauma, but in order for us to surpass it, we're going to have to let it go one day. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's so something deep. to we be attached. think about. Yeah. We be loving our trauma. Yeah, I think that's something we need to think about, especially as we try to grow in this country. Um, especially as entrepreneurs, you know, we can't sometimes you have to put the cost to the side and make your money. Make your money. Okay. Yes. All Very right. Good. Thank you, Don. Don, thank you so much. Thank you for everything that you do for this country. Yes. Thank you for taking the time to even just share what your thoughts are with us. Yes. Yay. I'm just going to make a big uh, difference. I appreciate all the supports. Uh, and, uh, it, it, it means a lot when you have supporters out there that, you know, you know, 
still behind us and uh, giving us the courage to go out there every yeah. day knowing that you know they need us you know and this is why i'm still doing what i'm doing today because there's people out there that wants to hurt you know people like you and mm -hmm. i want to come in between and kill them these people and <laughs> mm -hmm. oh my god <laughs> this one my, my goal is not to kill people and i'll wish i hope that i never had to yeah uh, kill someone yeah uh, mm -hmm. that's my goal yep okay well thank you so much again thank for you. sharing with us all right bye guys we'll see you on the thank next you. one thanks for being our first zoom call right. dawn <laughs> all right <laughs> all right bye bye